Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Theory Tuition series where I'm working with you step by step through each of the ABRSM theory grades. There are lots of resources available to help you on my website. If you visit SharonBill.com, you'll find some free PDF information sheets and you can download those in US letter or A4 and they accompany each step of this series. You'll find a page there with links to all of my YouTube video tutorials and you can also find information about the books that I have available. I've written an exam technique guide, how to take your ABRSM music theory exam. It's full of tips and hints on how to best prepare for your exam and also how to make the best use of your time when it's exam day and you're working through your exam paper. So if you go to SharonBill.com, you'll find it's all there. If you can give me a like, that would be really super and please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in store. And now we're going to have a look at this sample paper Y for grade four. This is a paper that was provided by the ABRSM. Uh, you can download it for free from the ABRSM website and you'll find the link to that in the description below and also in the cards. And this is to show you how the newly revised exam papers from 2018 will look like. So this is the new look paper. And so we're gonna have a look at this together. So if you turn with me to page two, just past the front cover and we'll have a look at this first question here. And so straight away we see the first change to the exam paper. So from now on all of the uh, performance directions and musical symbols will be presented to you in a uh, multiple choice format. The other difference is that there is no composition of a melody now, or sorry, composition of a rhythm or composition of a rhythm to words. That's no longer on the paper at all. So I always say, and I know that I'm repeating myself, uh, do have a go of this yourself, first of all. Have a go on your own, it doesn't matter if you make mistakes. It's always better to learn by your mistakes. Always work in pencil, I use a mechanical pencil so it stays nice and sharp. Uh, and then if you go wrong, you can just uh, rub it out and have another go and you'll learn more thoroughly that way. So then, we'll have a look at this together now. So look at this melody and then answer the questions below. So we've got a couple of multiple choice. Now remember for grade four, it can be anything from grade one, two, three or four uh, in the back of your music theory and practice workbooks from all of those workbooks. So presto is fast. And tempo giusto, I presume that's how you pronounce it. it. Well, whatever it sounds like, it actually means in strict time. So there we go. So there's nothing for it but to just have a good old crack at revising all of those terms from all of the previous grades as well as this one. Now the next question, we're going to be talking about keys and key signatures. And I always recommend that before you even start your exam paper, the first thing you can do is just sketch out your circle of fifths and therefore you'll have all of your major and minor keys to hand and then you can relax and just refer back to it rather than keep on having to keep thinking up that information. If you're not sure how to go about that, I, um, I've done a YouTube video tutorial on the circle of fifths and you can find the link to that in the description below as well. And so if you've done that, you've already done the thinking for that. So which key has the same key signature, we're talking about the related key, so D flat major is related to B flat minor, so they share the same key signature. So now we've got to draw a circle around three notes next to each other that form the tonic triad of D flat major, so before we go looking for that, let's see what it is we're looking for. The tonic triad is built of the first, the third and the fifth degrees of the scale, and so if we're in D flat major, of course, D flat is the first. I won't bother with all the flat signs because your key signature will take care of that. So the third, D, E, F, G, A, of course that would be A flat, but your key signature will deal with that. So we're looking for three notes next to each other that uh, form this triad. So we're looking for D, F, A. May not be in exactly that order, but as long as those three notes are present next to each other. So these are next door notes, this won't do. E, D, C, remember we're in the treble clef, so there's an A, there's an F, there's a D, so there we go, bar two, we didn't have to search too far, and uh, we've got those. 
let's move on to the next one. So now we're asked to give the technical name of the second note of the melody. So this note here, we need to give the technical name for. Uh, remember we're in D flat major, so you can either count up for the interval and think it's, there's the D flat one, two, three, four, five, six. We can see that it's the sixth there. However, if you're not terribly sure or you want to just double check that, if you just write out the, the steps of the scale, although well, you've even done the half the job here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can see that we're in a B, of course it's a B flat, but your key signature does all that for you. And we can see that B is the sixth. So now we've got the degree of the scale, we need to give it its correct technical name. And the sixth is the submedian. So then, now we're just asked to say if this is true or false, the two bracketed melodic intervals in bar four are both minor thirds. So then, let's have a look in bar four. So we're looking at these two sets of intervals. And so we need to say, are they both minor thirds? Well, at a glance, we can see that they're both thirds. This is a flat to C. Well, that's a major third because C is part of a flat major scale. So straight away, we know that this is false. So the fact that even though C to E is a minor, sorry, C to E flat is a minor third, this first one isn't, that's a major third. And so in general, that statement is false. Let's look at um, the next question. So now, we need to write as a brief or a double whole note an enharmonic equivalent of the first note of the melody. So we need to write this same note at exactly the same pitch, but in a different position on the stave. Now it's much easier to do that if you make a little bit of reference to the piano keyboard. Ooh, this one's looking a little bit worse for wear. And so you can visualize what's going on. So even if you don't play piano, I do suggest that you just quickly sketch out a keyboard, you get some scrap paper on exam day, it doesn't have to be a work of art, but it just helps you to visualize those intervals. So we are um, looking at the first note of the melody, that's a C, and so we could either call that a B sharp, or we could even call it a D double flat, so either one of those will do, but just be careful to position it correctly on the stave. So we could either have a B sharp, so if this is the C that we've been given, this will be the B sharp, so as a double whole note or a breathe, so B sharp, so that's the correct answer. Alternatively, either one of these will do, if that's the C that we are referring to, the D, it's a brief double flat, and that will answer that question. So either one of those will do, you haven't got to do both, just one. And now just a quick little bit of um, note reading, give the letter name of the lowest note in the melody. So the important thing here is just to make sure that you're aware of your clef, and also that you're aware of where the key signature might be active. So just scanning through, <coughs> Excuse me, uh, we're pretty low here. This one looks like it's the lowest. Nothing's be below that here, so this is your lowest. Now, because we're in quite a lot of ledger lines, there's a number of ways you can uh, work this out. You can either start with a note that you're familiar with, think, well, this is a C, and counting backwards, C, B, A, G, F. The key signature doesn't affect that, that's B, E, A, D. G flat, so that's just a normal F. Alternatively, if you find it hard counting backwards or you're not convinced that you feel sure about starting on middle C, if you give this note, um, count it as the first, the first degree, and count an octave up, one, two, three is the line, four, five, six, seven is the line, eight is the space, and we know that the space is spelled face, F-A-C-E, so we know that that's an F, but an octave lower. So either of those ways 
will give you the answer. And that's the end of that question. We'll have a look at another question in the next video. I do hope that that's helpful to you. I hope it's of benefit to your studies. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm certainly enjoying working through it with you. If you can give me a like, that would be really encouraging. That would be fab. And please do subscribe to my channel to keep updated. There's lots more in store. Please do have a browse around SharonBill.com and make use of all of the resources that's available to help you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.